time never waits. It delivers us all equally to the same end. You, who wish to safeguard the future, however limited it may be, go forth without falter, with your heart as your guide. Hello again, my beautiful gamers. It is I, Ratupi, from Ratupi's Game Room. Today we'll be looking at the next game in our Persona story retrospective, Persona 3. Spoiler warning! If you don't want to be spoiled, don't watch this video. Go out and play Persona 3. It's an amazing game. Our new story begins far away from Sumaru City, or even Mikaje Cho. Our main character heads towards his new home in the fictional city of Tatsumi Port Island, where many years ago an incident occurred that led to the death of his parents. He was traveling by train, which was running late due to an incident earlier that day. By the time he stepped out of the train, it was almost midnight. The clock was ticking, and by the time the ticks reached the top and midnight had arrived, everything had stopped. All electronics went down. The lights became dark and eerie. Blood was dripping all across the station. This was something usual for our protagonist, however. As he walked into the streets of Iwatodai, coffins lay everywhere upon the place, blood pouring from all of them. He had only one destination in mind, the Iwatodai dormitory. When he arrived, he was greeted by a kid around half his age. He tells him that he must sign a contract that states he assumes full responsibility from his actions from now on. Once it's over, the kid disappears and our hero is greeted by a few of his dorm mates, Yukari Takiba and Mitsuru Kujo. The next day begins as we are introduced to Gekakin High School, our main hub for the majority of the game. There he meets Junpei Iori, the goofball of the class. He'll become important later in the story. The days pass like normal until our main character is suddenly woken up by his dorm mate Yukari. She tells him that he must seek refuge as a thing has broken into your dorm. Downstairs, he finds Mitsuru Kurijo and the last of his dorm mates, Akihiko Sanada. As he's trying to keep the beast from entering the dorm, he was injured. He climbs up to the roof with Yukari, but it's too late. It has already found you. Yukari pulls the gun from her holster that she was carrying around and tries to shoot herself with it, to no avail. She is incapacitated, and there's nothing he could do. Or was there? Our main character picks up the gun and he feels an urge to pull the trigger. A voice in his head keeps telling him to. And then... Persona. As he defeats this monster, he enters the Velvet Room, a place between dream and reality, mind and matter. He is told that the power he just wielded is called a persona, a reflection of his true self. 
He is special, though, as he can wield multiple personas during battle unlike his partners. In this room, he will be able to fuse said personas into a more powerful persona. Once he wakes up, he is introduced to Shiji Akutsuki, the chairman of the dorm. Akutsuki is the boss and advisor of C's, the special extracurricular execution squad. But there they explain to him that during midnight, every day hides a special hour. A dark hour. During this hour, creatures known as shadows roam the streets and it's up to C's to exterminate them. Without a second thought, our main character joins C's along with his friend Junpei, of whom we talked to earlier. He, Junpei, and Yukari are set out to the task of exploring the strange tower-like building located where the school usually is. And such as the plot has been established now, it's time to talk about the gameplay. In the game, you must play through every day of the main character's year. During the day, you can go to school and bond with your friends using social links. Social links are the main gameplay mechanic of Persona 3. Each social link represents a single arcana, and raising a particular social link increases the experience bonus the protagonist receives when he fuses a persona of that arcana. By completing a social link, it unlocks an ultimate persona of that arcana. During the night, the player explores Tartarus in a typical dungeon-crawling gameplay setting, with one twist, personas. As you may have already known, personas let the player characters perform magic abilities during battle. They can be fused in order to obtain better skills, and they can also be obtained after receiving them after battles. In Tartarus, players must climb to the top of six randomly generated blocks, but of course you can't climb it in one go. Persona 3 introduces the mechanic of player status, where the player gets tired after fighting too much, which is utter bullshit and they got rid of that later, so, you know, good. While tired, party members are prone to miss attacks. Another way to stop progress is through blocking the access of the next block, unless a specific day is reached. A little ahead in the story, we are introduced to a new character, Fuka Yamagashi, who replaces Mitsuru as the team's support member. At this point, it is revealed that during full moon, certain shadows, more powerful than the ones in Tartarus, appear. Later on, during summer vacation, our team decides to spend their vacation on the island of Yakushima owned by the Kirijo Company, official sponsor of Seas. There, Mitsuru and her father, Takiharu Kirijo, finally revealed the truth to them. Ten years ago, the Kirijo group amassed and contained shadows inside of Gekukan High School to conduct experiments in order to harness their power. The experiment went wrong, thus creating the Dark Hour and Tartarus in its place. Those shadows later assembled and became twelve larger creatures, each affiliated with the Tarot's Arcana. C's member, Shuji Akutsuki, theorized that destroying all 12 creatures could potentially end the Dark Hour. Despite the chilling revelation, the team decides to enjoy the rest of Yakushima. Because the day after, our main character, Junpei and Akihiko, engage in a mission of maximum importance. Babe Hunt! Through a ton of trial and error, they find a rather mysterious lady. Ominous, and still, she overlooks the ocean. It is revealed that this person is Igis, a recently escaped anti-shadow weapon, who, for some reason, seems to want to stay by our main character's side. Igis joins our heroes and returns them to Tatsumi Port Island, where two new members of our team are waiting them. This time it's Kanamata, an elementary school student who suffered a tragic accident in the past and Koromaru the dog. It's a dog. Arf! Around this time, Akihiko manages to convince his foster brother Shinjiro Aragaki to rejoin Seas despite his previous objections. But even then, not all is good for our team, because a band of Persona users carrying out murders across Tatsumi Port Island exist. They are comprised of Takaya Sakaki, Jin Shirado, and Chidori Yoshino. They oppose Seas directly, since they want to maintain the Dark Hour and keep the power of their personas. It is revealed that they were a part of an experiment to artificially give them personas. They had used suppression pills to keep control of these artificial personas or else they would try to kill them. Such a thing caused an accident to lead to Kenamata's parents' death by Shinjiro's hands. As such, on October 4th, during a full moon, Ken confronts Shinjiro about the matter, and he is determined to kill him in order to get revenge. The rest of Seas takes note of this and rush towards their meeting place to save Shinjiro from his fate, only to arrive late, because the others were already there. (laughs) 
What is the meaning of this? Why would you risk your life to save this child? <gasps> Shinji! <sighs> How very disappointing. <sighs> Shinji! Shinji! So <sighs> What's with a long face? Isn't this what you wanted? <coughs> no, Senpai! It's all right. Give yourself time. Let your anger be your strength. Come on, kid. You're just a kid. You've got your whole life ahead of you. So don't waste it. Make it your own, okay? But I... I... Aki, take care of him. I will. This is how it should be. His loss had struck seas, but it also helped them find motivation to keep fighting. And so, they fought through the remaining full moon shadows with their newfound powers, the power of determination. And as they slain the shadows and Strega with it, they could enjoy the rest of their lives without the cancerous dark hour. But they were misled. By destroying the full moon shadows, they released a being called Nyx, who would bring the end of the world if fully restored. This was the original goal from the start. The Kirijo group had this in mind ever since the beginning. Seas accomplished their goal by the means of Akutsuki, who fed them lies in order to fulfill his secret agenda. It was Aegis who battled Nyx when it was first released. She dispersed into multiple, greater shadows, and into one last part. That part was sealed into a little boy who happened to be around. This boy was our main character, and Nyx's part was represented by the little boy who we kept dreaming about. Our team was at another loss, now with Mitsuru's father gone, and Mitsuru at grief, with no sign of hope at the horizon. Until Seas encountered Ryoji. Ryoji tells our team that he is the harbinger of death, the part of Nyx that was once sealed inside of our main character, and that if he is not killed by December 31st, he will ultimately become Nyx and bring the end of the world in an event known as the Fall. And as such, Seas is given the choice to either lose their memories and live normal lives until the inevitable end by killing Ryoji, or to spare him in order to finally stand against Nyx. In the end, if Seas chooses to take a stand, they will have to climb to the top of Tartarus on January 31st in order to stand against Nyx's form. Along the way, our main character has made many bonds with people he's encountered in school, his town, and even in his dorm. Abandoning all of this was a risk, but he... No. All of Seas needed to be determined to fight the overwhelming odds in order to conserve all of what they have done, the bonds they have shared with others. And as such, the promised day came, and Seas climbed to the very top of Tartarus, fighting the resurrected Strega along the way and reinforcing their bonds in order to awaken the most powerful of forces, friendship. As they got to the top, Ryoji was waiting for them, but this time he had taken his true form, the form of the Avatar of Nyx. With determination, Seas fought against his overwhelming power, to no avail. But he was still able to call forth Nyx. The fall had come upon the world, and it was time for Judgment Day as Nyx began to kill all other beings on Earth. Until something awakened in our main character. He had been illuminated by a sudden realization of not only of his inner capabilities, but the capabilities of mankind. It had come through the accumulation of his previous memories with Seas, his classmates, his friends of Iwatodai, and most importantly, 
the bonds he established with them. And as such, by using the power of all the socialings he gathered on his quest, he had found the answer to the big question. As he packed his confidence and determination, he confronted Nyx directly, and faced it for the fate of the entire world. The fight was over, and our team was finally at peace, but they have forgotten everything that had happened. All their bonds, all their lessons they had learned, they had remembered nothing. Only Igus and our main character held on to the promise they made when they reached the top of Tartarus, that if they made it out alive, that they would meet again after the graduation ceremony. Thankfully, something reawakened inside of the graduation ceremony. It was the memory of the events that transpired in Tatsumi Porn Island from 2009 to 2010. It was the things they had done, the people they had met, and the things they did together. They rushed to meet the place where they had arranged on that moment of hopelessness. And then they found them. I guess, and our main character in her lap. Time never waits, and delivers all equally to the same end. Go forth without falter, with your hearts as your guide. Our main character had gone through everything to safeguard their future, and now it was his time to rest. Despite our intentions, and despite our actions, we all end up in the same place. Death comes to us all. So make sure you do what you can with the life you got. You can safeguard the future and become the wings that let the butterfly freely fly across the sky. Because all of us can find the answer our hero desperately sought for. But what was that answer? that a future exists, and being able to access it, are very different things. We did not understand such an obvious and natural principle yet. Indeed, we understood very little. We knew nothing about using the key to open the path to the future. <laughs> 